Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Sarah DeWiggins, I'm a Marketing Manager for Proficient and I'm excited to be moderating today's webinar, Journey Science, the Next Frontier in Data-Driven Customer Experience. Let me give you a quick overview of Proficient. Proficient is a leading global digital consultancy. We imagine, create, engineer, and run digital transformation solutions that help our clients exceed their customers' expectations, outpace the competition, and grow their business. With unparalleled strategy, creative, and technolo technology capabilities, we bring big thinking and innovative ideas, along with practical approach, to help the world's largest enterprises and biggest brands succeed. We have a broad network of locations across the US, as well as offshore and nearshore facilities in India, China, Mexico, Colombia, and Serbia. And now a little background on our speakers. First, we have Brian Flanagan, a digital experience strategist. Brian combines CX strategy with technical solutions in order to maximize user engagement and drive business results. Then we have Eve Sanginito, a principal of digital marketing. Eve helps organizations deliver an immediate impact on revenue growth, market presence, brand credibility, and productivity. Jordan Cantor is a director of digital marketing. Jordan is a proven leader of teams that design, implement, and scale digital or scale data analytics and personalization programs. And finally, Nico Franson, director of AI and ML. Nico combines his love for cutting edge solutions and problem solving to help clients establish visions and roadmaps for their AI journeys. We'll go ahead and begin our presentation uh, with Brian. Please take it away. All right, thanks, Sarah. I'm going to start us off with a little quote. You guys might have seen a sneak peek of that, but uh, Davis Lewis Edelman said, today's customer journey is an iterative, complex pinball of touch points. And when you think about it, I think that makes a lot of sense, right? If you think of customer interactions, they're bouncing around across different channels and touch points. And all the while, as an organization, you're trying to keep them in play, try to keep them uh, from falling through the funnel. Um, and you want to reward them when they have a successful play. So. I think that really talks about the experience of, of uh, managing customer expectations. And it really brings us to that really to create great experiences, it requires a journey focused mindset. Right? You have to think across different channels. Uh, your customers aren't thinking about a single channel or a business unit. They just think about their experience with your brand and they expect you to understand their needs and help them on their journey, no matter what part of the organization they're interacting with. But a lot of organizations struggle with that and, and piecing it all together. You can probably all think of an experience that you've had where it might have been disconnected, right? So I recently had an experience with the retailer where I signed up for the rewards program on site at the register and put all my information in. And then I go to check out and it asked me if I want a digital receipt. So I'm like, yeah, great. I'll do a digital receipt. Just like that. And then the first thing it asked me is to enter my email. Right. I just entered all that information and it, the systems just weren't connected, which really provided a disjointed experience. And it's one of the, the, the key challenges that we see is really making sure that these channels are all communicating with each other, that you know who that customer is, and then you can create that cohesive experience. So just thinking about some of the common challenges that we see is, you know, first, there's a lack of data. So on the, the research side, when you're developing and understanding around your customer, some organizations don't necessarily do all the research to understand the customer needs. Uh, they may develop proto personas or um, develop a, a representation of the customer based on their own experience, right? And, and really, we really feel that collecting that data um, to have that foundation is really important. So the personas and segments should really be based on data. Or, you know, organizations may have done a lot of great work around developing personas and developing customer journeys but they're put on the shelf and they're not used within the design process. They're not used to optimize experiences. They become forgotten artifacts. Also, you know, we'll see a lot of times the vanity metrics are being used. So they they may look good on the surface, but they're not translating into meaningful business insights. So they're not truly measuring the customer experience and, and ensuring that you know, we're supporting them on their journey. We're just looking at things that may um, represent some of the parts of the experience, but they don't really tell the full story. 
And then another challenge we see is there's siloed views within an organization. So one team may look at their part of the world and say, okay, here's where we want to improve that experience. And they're doing a lot of great work there, but they're forgetting about the other interactions that customers have with other parts of the business, right? So they're not considering that full journey and how a customer may move within different parts of the business in order to accomplish their complete journey. And then uh, the last piece is really limited analysis where you know, organizations are collecting a lot of data, um, but they're not sufficiently analyzing that in order to provide insights that are gonna predict customer behavior. So this is where data science comes in and really analyzing that data to inform uh, future state recommendations. Okay, so that brings us to journey science. And journey science is a cross-functional discipline that combines research-based insights with data-driven evidence in order to understand, predict, and optimize the customer journey at every point, touch point. And a lot of organizations are doing different aspects of this. So they have a really great research team. They may even have a great data science team. But a lot of times we see that those things aren't connected and the team's not working together as a cohesive discipline, right? So. Um, this is where journey science comes in. And there's really six key core competencies that we see. Uh, the first is research. So that's gaining insights that's going to inform the strategy. Uh, the second is segmentation, so identifying and empathizing with your customers. And then behavioral analytics is capturing data and activity across multiple channels. So you can see what people are actually doing across experiences. And then journey design, so examining the experience across interactions, so designing out that journey and validating that journey based on the data that you see. And then predictive modeling is you analyzing patterns to predict future outcomes. So that's really around that data analysis, looking at that data, what is it telling us? What do we predict based on what we've seen historically? And then finally, it's experimentation, validating predictions and optimizing those experiences. So once we have a prediction, we think this is going to actually impact customer behavior. Let's validate that through experiments and see if we can prove out that uh, we are optimizing the experience. So these are, you know, presented linear, linearly here, but you shouldn't think of them that way. They they are a cohesive solution or components of a cohesive solution, and they all inform each other. So in the experimentation, for example, you might find out that, hey, this pattern is emerging, that people actually aren't are clicking on the offer that we had presented. And so you know that doesn't work, but you not, might not know why, right? So that's where you'll go back and, and do some additional research and say, okay, we want to understand why this is occurring. And then, you know, an example of predictive modeling, you know, that's going to provide recommendations of what's going to happen. And then we can look that to form, inform some of the behavioral analytics, like what additional data do we need to collect to make better predictions, right? So we want to go back to that. And then from a journey design perspective, it's really looking at the experience across those interactions. So you want to say, um, is this the journey, the journey that we created? Is this actually what people are doing? Right. So we want to say, OK, is this the behavior that we're seeing? And then tie that to additional segments. So the journey may differ for different segments of your your customer base. So when you look at that journey, we may define that initial journey and then modify that based on different segments and their behavior. So it really should be a continuous process. Um, and as, as I mentioned, we think of this, this is really a discipline that needs to be established at an enterprise level. All right, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Eve to dive into our research-based insights and give us a little more detail here. Thanks, Brian. So one of the areas that's really important from our perspective to dive into is um, uh, sort of multi-dimensional um, cross-functional look at research and how it informs some of the process Brian was talking about. So qualitative research is really about trying to understand the context of where um, some of your research candidates and participants are coming from, their, their opinions, their attitudes, their motivations, what is informing some of their perspective on things. That's often done through um, exercises like uh, interviews um, and uh, discussions. Quantitative research is really where you're starting to look at trends, uh, statistically identifying patterns that you see across segments of, um, of uh, audiences, whether that be customers, employees, partners, et cetera, so that you can understand some of the defining characteristics that make up those segments. And by looking across both of those, you have an, an understanding of kind of the defining characteristics, but also the context behind it, because all of that allows you to really um, appeal to the needs that they have if you understand more of their motivations. 
from a competitive standpoint, it's really just important that you're looking at um, the landscape that your organization is within. Um, it may be that if you're looking at research only from within your organization and you're not looking across the experiences they're having with your competition or in their consumer experiences in general, um, you might not have a full picture of what their expectations are or how those match to what they expect from your organization. One of the other important pieces that, um, that we found incredibly useful is immersive research. So that's where the researchers um, immerse themselves in the experience that uh, a customer or a partner or an employee may be having so that they can experience it firsthand to inform some of the research they're going to conduct, but also some of the analysis. Um, of that research to really look at the opportunities where the experience they're having can be improved. All of that helps inform a number of things, but one of the first pieces that it informs in terms of segmentation. So as I had mentioned, you really wanna sort of understand the motivations and kind of the thinking and, and, and also the opinions, but uh, the opportunities with all of the, the research that you're conducting. And you want to start to sort of look at those in categories of uh, individuals that really might have common patterns. They might be common patterns between them through uh, you know, demographic attributes, or it might be through attributes in terms of uh, desires and interests that they have, or ways that they engage with technology, or perspectives they have from a worldview uh, point of view. So persona development enables us to start to create those profiles so that we get, better, get a better understanding of how to interact and communicate with one segment versus the other and better meet their needs. That even can arise to things like technology. Um, some, some groups of individuals that your organization might uh, interact with might be more um, technology well-versed than others and might have preferences in one direction or another. And all of those insights allows you to create a better experience for them um, that isn't one unique mass experience. One of the, the sort of common uh, questions or, or issues that comes up around persona development is many organizations do them, but don't know then how to activate them and put them into um, the experience that they're creating for uh, the audiences. So dynamic segmentation is where you're able to do more precise targeting within environments from a uh, digital experience standpoint in order to actually activate on the insights that you have and, and target some uh, unique experience based on those segments. And you can see as we flip through, um, you can get really in depth in terms of an understanding of your persona segments um, because you know you can kind of look at the top level from a profile perspective. But if there are key interaction points or areas that they would interact with your business where it would be important to know, um, you know, what would they like that experience to be? What kind of content would actually be beneficial to them in that experience? What kind of features and capabilities um, do they have an interest in in terms of how they communicate uh, with you? All of that depth. Uh, can be outlined and developed in persona if you've done a, a, a multi-dimensional in-depth approach to research. And then it can keep evolving um, as well. That's another point I want to make about research is it isn't um, a one-time research effort and then done. Um, you want to be evolving it over time because the environment within which we all live is always evolving and the experiences that we're having and your business is changing all the time. So you want to sort of set a foundation but then continue to target and refine um, based on the insights that you can continue continue to gather by watching their interactions or immersing in the experiences that they're having. And you can see an illustration of that on the right of how that can be applied within a digital experience environment to target uh, based on your understanding of one segment versus another. Okay, thanks Eve. Uh, so now we're going to throw it over to Jordan to dive into the data-driven evidence piece here. Thanks Brian. So the next piece of journey science is uh, building data-driven evidence related to behavioral analytics. And one of the key components of journey science as it relates to behavioral analytics is how do we collect data specifically around the key touch points and journeys that allow us to deepen our relationship with customers and uh, prospects. And, and what we found is that uh, in, in our research and, and in developing journey science is that we, um, we both can develop uh, key insights around these journeys as well as deliver 
uh, richer insights related specifically to the journeys and how they, how the visitor interacts with the brand. So for example, when a customer uh, may be attending a uh, retail store, one of the ideas is to understand first what persona that customer represents and then how does that person's behavior within the retail store really translate to the way that those high-level personas define interactions and how the high-level personas uh, relate to said interactions. In particular, does the behavioral data agree with how we've designed those high-level personas? Are, um, is someone who is shopping for a pair of shoes um, showing us that they're they're looking at um, you know lower price options as we perhaps have predicted they would, or in fact, does this person either not fit within this persona category, or do our personas need revising according to the behavioral analytical data? So. Uh, one of the sort of key features of journey science is that we um, have enabled sort of this high-level strategic design based on behavioral facts or behavioral evidence. And that includes not only just path analysis, so understanding what the individual is doing from the beginning, middle, and end, but also uh, overlaying heat mapping, behavioral heat mapping associated with the individual's current behavior. So whether that's behavioral heat mapping as it relates to a digital experience or behavioral heat mapping as it relates to a physical experience. And also sort of more advanced analysis uh, associated with uh, a visitor's mood uh, or um, how the visitor feels about the brand. If an individual purchases uh, a particular product or service and then um, moves over to a social network and makes um, a positive or negative comment about the brand, are we able to uh, enable, are we able to build journeys to allow or design journeys to allow a company to, in, to both interact with those types of feedback, but also build journeys in response to those types of feedback and design journeys as they relate to those types of feedback. And so this relates specifically, we can move on to the next slide, to journey design. So journey design really comes in two specific, in two flavors. Flavor one would be high level experience mapping. Uh, and 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 the high level experience mapping is essentially right a, a, a set of stages that the individual can uh, proceed through, as well as um, some some sort of high level right overall customer experience uh, um, data. Journey mapping takes that a step further. It describes a particular goal or particular intent of that particular persona, and then it moves through the particular touch points based on that specific goal or intent. And that's what really, the journey mapping is what really allows us to build those experiences. Uh, specifically, um, and one of the unique features of journey science, specifically around these two types of mapping exercises, well, first of all, these mapping exercises are not purely academic research activities, right? They, they really sort of translate into building these better experiences, but also what journey science allows us to do is it allows us to fold in uh, data-driven evidence and data-driven uh, data collection to both of these types of journey design. So for example, within experience mapping, um, if we understand the particular sort of high level stages of what the individual is doing, we could also design the particular, the particular types of data that may be relevant at those points along the, the customer experience. So for example, um, if this is an individual that's trying, that, uh, we're building a high-level journey about uh, renting an apartment, for perhaps one of the one of the potential 
um, uh, signals along that apartment rental journey could be um, location. And so we, we can add to that um, location of interest so <clears throat> or potential set of location of interest. And so we can add particular data collection points along that journey in order to establish some knowledge about what the individual is trying to accomplish or maybe we could customize the experience in order to satisfy you know an individual who's looking um, in a certain part of Manhattan for example. Um, likewise with journey mapping we can do the same thing. We can establish data context, what we call in context data um, for each of the individual touch points and then we can um, under, better understand how we can build out those touch points in response to that in-context data. All right, thanks, Jordan. I was gonna, I was gonna add on, on on top of that. I think it's important also to understand whether the the, the the current state of uh, your journey maps are, uh, as well as ideating what you would like them to be. And I think this is where you start surfacing uh, and trying to. Uh, as you try to improve you know, those customer uh, journeys, you, you try to predict their intent and you're trying to um, stay ahead of their needs. And this is where you know, we, we can transition to, to, to the next slide um, into uh, predictive uh, modeling. Um, so we, we've gone through you know, all of the research, we've analyzed you know, the data that we have available, measured uh, and, and uh, you know, surfaced all the behavior, uh, behavioral analytics. Uh, we understand what we want the customer journey uh, to be and identified specific touch points that should we be able to uh, accurately predict what they're gonna do next based on what they've shared with us so far, based on their behavior, based on their persona, based on their segment. Now we can predict what they're gonna do next and we wanna do that uh, at scale. And, and accurately, and this is where you know we leverage uh, machine learning and predictive, uh, you know, modeling, um, and starting by validating all of those uh, all those assumptions that um, we surface, you know, through through research and behavioral analytics, uh, ensuring that you know we can explore uh, and identify you know the similar patterns, but also understand you know correlation between you know some of those patterns and the outcomes. Uh, the uh, or the intent of the customer uh, that we want to to predict. Um, we then, in a traditional data science you know fashion, we go through uh, model development, uh, but, and that may also need I mean that we need to engineer uh, many different you know features that are not just uh, first party data or raw data that we have available, uh, but that we need to engineer. Uh, in order to uh, to better better represent and surface, you know, some of those you know patterns that are going to be important for a machine learning model to to learn from and to accurately predict um, that outcome. And obviously, you know, this part of model development is uh, in is, is really a science experiment, right? You have to iterate uh, and trying to optimize, you know, through uh, hyperparameter you know optimization, but ultimately you end up with a model, a machine learning model that uh, you can deploy in production um, and, and utilize uh, to, to predict those behaviors. Um, and that's gonna help you then, you know, leverage you know, those you know, predictions uh, and validate those predictions uh, to inform, recommend, uh, and ideally even automate, you know, some of the decision-making you know, process. So those are all the steps, you know, that are very much iterative, you know, traditional to, to data science, but very much informed. And uh, in many cases, uh, you know, bootstrapped by a lot of the other activities uh, that um, yeah, even Jordan, uh, you know, mentioned before. So it's critical to really think as, um, as, a, as this, all these activities as a joint, um, you know, initiative, you know, throughout the organization and not do them in, uh, in a bubble or in a segregated fashion. And finally, um, you have, uh, you're trying to predict, uh, you're predicting customer intents, uh, you have to then experiment with, with customers. So obviously going through, you know, A-B testing, you know, split testing, comparing, you know, different, you know, concepts, 
uh, different ways, you know, to predict, you know, the customer, uh, you know, behaviors and personas uh, based on, you know, based on performance and start now gathering um, data uh, to measure the impact of those, you know, predictions, the impact of those changes to the customer journeys, you know, through, uh, through split testing. Uh, we want to also bid, build that feedback loop, you know, to our predictive models uh, and measuring the uh, the impact, the you know, the accuracy, uh, the response, and engagement, you know, from those customers based on those you know predictions. So it's it's critical to also ensure that there is that uh, connected and direct feedback loop into our predictive uh, models. And then finally, you know, using you know, the split testing approach, we can then explore, you know, do path exploration and explore, you know, different types of, you know, journey flows uh, and different types of predictions that we're making in those, uh, in those customer journeys uh, to understand, you know, the effectiveness uh, of a particular, you know, sequence of event triggers uh, and touch points, you know, that the customer, you know, may have. And finally, as you find, you know, that perfect, you know, uh, you know set, you know, that, that works, uh, that you demonstrated with data, with analytics, uh, the impact on the customer journey, you now, you now can exploit and deploy uh, to, to a larger audience and, and truly capitalize on that experiment, uh, on all of this research um, and experimentation, uh, you can now you know, exploit and really uh, uh, you know, get the benefits of it. But because of you have this whole frameworks of data-driven uh, analytics of research, you can also then measure the incremental uh, and cumulative you know, benefits of you know, your changes you know, going forward and really build a strong you know, business case for you know, continue to, uh, to do additional you know, experiments. Uh, now, obviously, all of these steps uh, and all of the different competencies you know, that we talked about uh, have different you know, uh, layers of uh, maturity that you know i'll let uh you know brian uh kind of walk us through all right thanks nico yes we've talked through six gears and you can see there's a lot packed into journey science but um our maturity model breaks it down to be something a little bit more digestible um, so we have a crawl walk run fly model um, and for each of the six uh, areas or competencies um we've put an indication of you know what is the maturity at each stage? Uh, so if you think of like segmentation, for example, you might start out with general market segments and these might be Claritas segments or um, cycle segments that you purchased, um, but it's a good foundation for understanding. And then in the walk stage, you'd wanna drive, develop those data-driven personas. So you're doing the research to inform the personas and you're really making them your own. In the run stage, you're gonna utilize those personas to drive personalization. So not just at the design stage, but at delivering the experience, you know, leverage those personas to align to those customers and then personalize based on that criteria. And ultimately in the fly, that's where, you know, you've talked about dynamic segmentation, right? Where you're really taking a trait-based approach and looking at some of the behavioral um, activity in order to drive some of those dynamic segments and really small as a segment of one, ultimately, when you get to personalization. Um, so this maturity model breaks it down a bit. Um, and helps kind of understand, you know, where your organization might be uh, within journey science. And then, you know, taking that a step further, uh, we've developed something that we call journey science IQ. Uh, so it's a framework that helps you assess your organization across these six dimensions um, and then identify those opportunities to improve uh, the discipline as a whole, but also how do you improve the customer experience? So. Uh, this is something where we can help organizations look into um, their their operations, understanding what they're doing, where there might be gaps. Uh, we'll assess each of the six dimensions, look at the different levels within those dimensions, and it dives deeper than that maturity model. So we'll we'll break it down to uh, a little bit more fine-grained um, actions and activities, uh, so you can get a sense of where your organization is and and where there are opportunities to grow. And as we mentioned, you know, because we really think journey science is something that needs to be embedded in an organization. So it's not just something that you're going to do up front. Hey, we just did some journey science work and now we're done. No, it's ongoing, right? There's continuous discovery. There's continuous improvement and optimization. Uh, so it's, it really needs to be an embedded skill. All right. And with that, I'm going to turn it over and see if we have any questions. 
Yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and enter those in the questions box. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some that we have now. Uh, so, hey, what would you say, what are the latest trends and developments in the field of journey science? Anything that you can share with us? So for me, I'll, I'll answer, start off, and maybe Jordan or Nico can add into that. I think, you know, one of the key things is around, you know, first-party data, right? We're talking about collecting customer data. And what are those opportunities to gather more data about their profile and really make that a known experience? And so that's one of the things we're helping organizations. When we look at that journey, it's not just about, you know, what are the opportunities to use data, but it's also what are those opportunities where we can collect data across different interactions in order to provide better experiences. I'll jump in That's as well. I was just going to jump in. And I also think there's a move towards just the um, development of assets and artifacts um, and the activation towards more of an activation of the use of those um, and orchestration across the organization about how you can uh, leverage those insights to create a better ongoing experience, both internally and externally. Um, there are organizations who've been mature like that for some time, but um, but I think it's becoming more widely adopted. Yeah, and Jordan, I'll 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 still if I you 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 had shared before uh, that I thought was quite relevant is also it's important to consider uh, not just the digital experience but also you know connecting the data from physical experience and how do we capture data from physical experiences from you know walking into you know a brick and mortar store and and really thinking about. Uh, that that holistic, you know, like uh, customer journey, not not just from your digital assets uh, or touch points, but also from the physical ones. Okay, Sarah, any other questions? Did it be any? Uh, looks. Uh, let's see. What sort of challenges do organizations have in adopting journey science? What have you seen? I mentioned it a little bit and say, you know, the big thing is having commitment at an enterprise level, like looking across the organization, that it's not just uh, one team um, that is looking at journey science and adopting it, it's that everybody in the organization adopts the, the mindset and then it becomes embedded so that, you know, every product that's developed um, takes a journey focused approach. Um, that the organization, the different teams across the organization are talking to each other and aligning on that customer journey. I think that's one of the, the shifts and that, you know, sometimes some of these capabilities have been siloed in different teams across an organization. So connecting them as one cohesive unit is really important and, and can be a challenge. I'll jump in there as well. One of the, the things that we see often is there are, uh, depending on, you know, sort of the type of organization or um, how long they've been in business, uh, often organizations may not have as much interaction or dialogue with their customers um, as you might expect. Uh, so they have interactions through, you know, purchase channels and things like that, but not a lot of dialogue getting their feedback or voice of the customer. Um, and so that's an area that we really encourage because it can make a significant amount of difference. Um, but that's a hurdle uh, sometimes for certain types of organizations that um, that just have historically not done that. And it's a shift in the way that they think about uh, going about gathering inputs to the way they do business. Great. Anyone have anything else to add to that? Yeah, I think I think some challenges are traditional challenges as well with uh, uh, that one would have with data ingestion programs. I think uh, data quality uh, and, and the quality of the insights being able to gain from said data is definitely a challenge. Um, that's not unique to journey science necessarily, but it's definitely something that would impact the the ongoing adoption of the program. I was thinking the this is a this is an old challenge. It's not. It's not. It's nothing new. But obviously, you, Brian, you talked about the the common challenges at the the at the beginning of uh, the the presentation of you know the siloed data, and um, it's it's great if you can still get all the right people in the same room. But if you don't have a way to you know connect and stitch you know the data from all those siloed and legacy systems, that will remain a challenge, and that's probably you know something that. Most of you on the call uh, in your own uh, line of business or organizations, uh, a, a challenge that you've been trying to tackle for uh, you know for a long time, uh, and one that you know still bears a lot of um, uh, importance, right? Uh, to to support you know these kind of 
uh, approaches, you know, around uh, evaluating and, and truly transforming customer journeys. All right. So I think we have one last question. What would you say is the most important thing an organization needs to do to get started with journey science? I would say talk to Brian. That's, <laughs> that's the most important part. Um, but no, Brian, just just joking aside. Uh, I think I think even thinking about it and realizing, you know, it's important to you know to see, you know, how how you would even consider implementing your your own flavor of journey science. Like, how do you function around evaluating customer journeys today? Do you, just do an assessment. Ask ask who who in the organization is working on some of those competencies. Just identify the key players and start having a conversation. Um, if you're not already talking on a regular basis. Yeah, I just agree. And I think it's uh, the first step is looking to see where your gaps are. So we've outlined the framework. The organizations can look at that. Um, we can also help and dive into that deeper. But just seeing where, where there might be gaps in your organization and then working to, you know, fill those gaps by, you know, making that bigger commitment to adopting journey science. All right, great. So we'd like to, you know, thank everyone for joining us today. I'd like to thank our speakers, our very knowledgeable speakers. Um, and we'd love, do we have a last slide, Brian? We don't. Okay. So uh, I'd love to, um, you know, invite anyone who has any additional questions about Journey Science to get in contact with us. Um, you can take a look at our Journey Science on our website. And, uh, you know, I encourage you to follow Proficient's team online as we have new information added daily, connect with us on LinkedIn, and you can visit proficient.com, as I said, um, you know, to learn, to have a, take a look at some of our blogs, our guides, our upcoming webinars, and more. And we will send out a follow-up with, uh, you know, a link to our deck as well as the webinar. And thank you again for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.